In a universe populated by monsters, giants, and larger than life beings, I was determined to find my own path to the top of the mountain in sports entertainment. I wasn't gifted with superhuman size or strength, but I did have an insatiable thirst to learn, the physical gifts to take to the air, and an uncle who was more than happy to give me the tools needed to become one of the greatest competitors to ever lace up a pair of boots. Starting my career in Mexico, I'd be known first as La Lagartija Verde, which means the green lizard, and Colibri, hummingbird. Still a teenager, I would eventually earn the highest honor from my uncle as I was officially crowned Rey Misterio Jr. I would take everything I had learned from my uncle and make it all my own. I would bring Lucha Libre to the world stage. I would make cruiserweights as popular as our heavyweight counterparts. And I would prove that a cruiserweight could win it all as long as they were given the opportunity. I would arrive in America first stopping in ECW before garnering the attention from the top people at WCW who quickly signed me to a contract. With my foot in the door, it was just a matter of time before I took over the world of sports entertainment. Every step, a battle. Every opponent, a new face who felt they were superior to me. Every match, giving me a new objective to strive to meet. Should I try to weaken their legs? Throw all of my aerial techniques at them? Maybe surprise them with some defensive lucha libre? Take it to the outside? Show off my newest move? By the time I got to the ring, I always had a little mental list of things I wanted to try in order to win. And with every victory, I got another reminder that the best was yet to come. After winning WCW's Cruiserweight Championship, Cruiserweight Tag Team Championship, and the World Tag Team Championship, I would finally head to WWE to further build my legacy. In the near 20 years since I debuted in WWE, I have become known as quite simply the greatest luchador in sports entertainment history, the greatest mass superstar of all time. Ray is the king. Having competed against every big name possible and having defeated nearly everyone that stepped in my way. Not every road is paved with gold and mine was no different. But even when the road gets challenging, there's always opportunity. The opportunity to learn from mistakes, to grow as a competitor, and to get better. I may not have had my hand raised every time out, but there's never been a time where I didn't leave the ring better than when I entered. The memories behind the infamous match of Halloween Havoc 1997 which I truly believe is a match that put me on the map. I was a big fan of Eddie growing up, so to be able to forward all these years and then eventually share the ring with him, it was incredible. It was an honor for me to face one of the Guerreros. Overall, that match was highly important for me. The fact that I could become Cruiserweight Champion that night and defend my mask, not have to be unmasked, you know, that was something that was really in the back of my mind. I just didn't want to go through that. They were trying to take off every luchador's mask one by one, and I was on the list. So you could only imagine the stress that had built up. And for us luchadores, it's a very prized possession. You know, this is something that I've carried since 1992. We both know, Eddie and I, what the mask means to us that carry it. So he knew what was at stake. I would never give him the satisfaction of taking my mask. Never. You know, that, that slingshot sent on that Eddie always does, it's beautiful to see when you're not on the receiving end, but it sucked being on the other end of that senton. And seeing him taunt me, you know, it kind of boosted me up. It fueled me up to keep going during that match. Yeah! 
then I get a drop kick on the back of my head, I was starting to really wonder if I'd be able to win this thing and was really getting desperate. Respect.
had me in a splash mountain move when the only thing I could think of at that point, hook him into a rana. That's exactly what I did. I remember taking him down, felt my knees bang against the mat, but I hooked that one leg and then I just pushed my weight forward and I just heard the one, two, three. It was over at that point. I have to admit, regaining the championship was one of the greatest feelings in the world. Pero el poder defender el honor de la máscara y el nombre de Mysterium fue algo mucho más grande. I've sat and watched that match. I actually watched it not too long ago with my son Dominic. And it's a match that I still learn from. And, you know, it's a match that doesn't get old. I truly believe that if there was no Eddie Guerrero, my career would have gone a different direction. Eight years after our epic Halloween Havoc clash, Eddie and I were on better terms, but still found ourselves unable to resist the friendly competition in WWE. Holding the WWE Tag Team Championships only drove us to wonder who the better man on the team was. We both held victories over the other, but the chance to meet at the showcase of the Immortals, WrestleMania, was something we couldn't pass up. For the first time ever, two tag team champions would go one-on-one -on -one at the grandest stage of them all. We both knew what this match meant to the other, and it's what made it so fun to go out there and try to take the glory for ourselves. With no hard feelings, of course. take this back to Halloween Havoc. I tried to get fancy with him. He pulled me off the apron immediately. So this time, I made sure I ended up on top in the ring when I wanted to show off for a quick second. Live and learn, correct?
again. Always Eddie, he knew and had incredible ring awareness. Another backbreaker. I was really wondering if this was just not going to be my night. Eddie went for the backbreaker one more time, which he already done before, and I made him pay with the perfect Huracarana, my signature move. From feeling hopeless to beyond words that I won, I competed against Eddie so many times. He'd won, I'd win, but I swear that at WrestleMania 21, I faced the best version of Eddie Guerrero, the man. There's a small part of me that still can't believe I pulled it out. I was actually shocked. He was just on a different level that night. What a win that was for me, historical. The toughest thing about this day was what we were all living, what we were going through. It was hard for us to accept that Eddie was no longer with us. Everyone was hurting. I asked myself, what would Eddie have done? And Eddie was all about the business. Whatever happened, show must go on. So I did expect to wrestle Sean one day, just not under those terms. One of the greatest legends in WWE history. He has a lot of respect for this business and for the superstars that are up and coming. By Shawn Michaels asking me if, if I had the energy and the courage to have a match against him that night. He didn't have to choose me, but he did because he knew that Eddie would have loved it. That speaks of the type of human being that he is. Losing Eddie was one of the most painful experiences in both my personal and professional life. The WWE Universe came together to pay tribute to one of the most respected and beloved superstars of all time. This was a difficult night for all of the obvious reasons but we wanted to put on a show that Eddie would be proud of. I found myself in a rare one-on-one -on -one match with another living legend, the heartbreak kid, Shawn Michaels. Of course, I wanted to win for myself, for my fans, and for Eddie. And while Shawn was also grieving, I knew that he would still give me everything he had, just as Eddie would have wanted.
see this often and I was really surprised to see HBK make such a basic error. If that 619 connects, I'm thinking to myself it's over. I remember Sean biting on that 619 fake out and just thinking to myself let's go and just launching myself at him to the floor. So I connect with the 619, and I already know what's coming next. Springboard, Lake. When I hit that, and I saw that he didn't move, and I connected, I remember hooking the leg, and I was in awe when I heard the three. I couldn't believe it. I really was shocked. Now, you have to keep in mind, this is my first time facing Shawn Michaels. But at the same time, my brother had just passed. So... Mixed emotions, but I felt like a truly blessed man. And I know Eddie was watching. I know Eddie was in that ring. He had a special corner that night and enjoyed every minute of it, just like we did. I believe defending a championship is way harder than becoming a champion. There's always more pressure defending, keeping that title that you work hard to get. Anyone, whoever wants to become champion, they just want to destroy you. They want to take what's yours. And with a guy like Jake BL, he just wants to destroy you. But he would always nag and put you down. 
He would step on you and step on you. Amigo! Crush you down and just make you feel this big. Being the smallest superstar in that ring, facing giants in a world of giants, that was my fuel to overcome every time I step into the ring. I had finally reached the pinnacle of WWE by winning the World Heavyweight Championship at WrestleMania in honor of my good friend, Eddie Guerrero. As a World Heavyweight Champion, I knew I had a target on my back and would face some of my toughest opponents, including John Bradshaw Layfield. JBL always made it very easy to get motivated for a match. His loud mouth, the constant mockery, and his knack for crossing the line to make things personal. He didn't think I was a real champion. He thought I'd just be a stepping stone to his reign as a dual champion. Went into Judgment Day, ready to show him that all his bluster and power wasn't enough to stop Rey Mysterio.
big boot catches you right across the face, you're talking a size 13, all in your face. Wrestling, suplex. Obviously, I didn't see this happen because I was on the floor. And I'm glad I didn't, because I would have got right back up and kicked him in the face. Thank <laughs> you. 
after hitting JBL with the baseball slide drop kick right at the side of his legs. And yeah, to remind JBL just who he was messing with. This was such a satisfying win. Nobody throws you off your game like JBL. Getting the victory meant a ton to me. And of course, and still, world champion. The big red machine, Kane, had his sight set on eliminating me from WWE in 2008. The monstrous seven-foot-tall behemoth took pleasure in mocking my pain and misery. Kane thought he could use his mind games to break me, but I wasn't going to let that happen. It's tough keeping your head in the game when facing someone who's so sick and sadistic, but at Cyber Sunday, where the WWE Universe would choose our match stipulation, the fans chose no holds barred. I didn't know what type of strategy I was going to bring to the table that night. My technique has always been aerial maneuvers. Was I going to be able to get away with it at an holds barred match? I made a promise to myself that I wasn't going to show fear. How do I take the big man down? Hit him with whatever I got. I was going to meet him head on regardless of the match type and show him that you can't break Rey Mysterio.
had me in big trouble. Anytime he hits you, takes you out. tank, but I was going to try to do anything I could to try to pin him and win. Definitely a little letdown that he kicked out, but I just had to stay focused and on top of him. stairs with the drop toe hold. Once I hit the 619 and the springboard splash, it was over. Now, I had too much at heart to let the fans down. They were the ones that chose this match. They wanted a no DQ match. Here it is. And what a true honor to be WWE legend like Kane and a Hall of Famer. I mean, I have to admit, Kane is special, but an evil special.
When I became Intercontinental Champion, I was honored to hold the title with such a vast legacy of greatness. I was excited to face new challengers as the landscape was evolving. A brash newcomer named Dolph Ziggler thought he had me figured out and brushed me to the side. My point of view of Dolph Ziggler coming in, I had the utmost respect for him. He was very exciting to watch. He had a style, but with a new spike to it, a new feel to it. I knew Dolph was hungry coming into this match, and he was one of the up-and-coming superstars. But there's a mistake that he made that you never make in this business. Dolph felt like he was already the Intercontinental Champion before our match had even started. So I made sure to teach him a very valuable lesson at the biggest party of the summer. At SummerSlam, Dolph's arrogance was going to be his downfall if I had my way. Him. No problem. I'm defending my championship, you know? That meant some more high risk lucha libre, too. Ziggler showed me some real high ring IQ when he went for broke here. But he also showed his experience when he let me regroup right next to him while this was all going down and he was throwing his tantrum. Can't do that when you're against me. Thank <laughs> you. 
was an incredible opponent, no doubt about that. But that night, I was at a level he wasn't ready for. I like to think he learned a lot from that loss. Like maybe even I helped him become great, you know? But what a big win that was for me. I love being Intercontinental Champ. Love defending it against hungry competitors like Dolph Ziggler. That bragging rights for the world heavyweight title was every man for himself. I would have thought that Batista would have known that walking into that match. I'm no stranger to betrayal. Throughout my career, I had people that I thought were friends end up turning their backs on me. But this one, for some reason, it hit a very soft spot. I couldn't make sense of what had gone down. After weeks of verbal and physical assaults, I knew that we could never go back to the way things were. I wanted to make him feel the same way I did, to return that feeling to him. And the best way I could think to do that was to beat him on SmackDown and get the number one contender spot that Batista felt belonged to him. I knew Batista's game plan from the get-go was going to be to manhandle me. It definitely did the trick. So I just drop kick him back down to reality. He gave me a chance to reset the match, uh, just a little, and I was happy to take it.
I was going out on my sword, you know? I wanted to get revenge on him, but I knew the best way to do it was winning the match and taking the world championship opportunity from me. Batista just wanted to hurt me, and his forgetting the gold made it possible for me to get that win. I hated having to fight him. Hey, you gotta do what you gotta do once that bell rings. After dealing with Batista, I felt like I was at the top of my career. I was a number one contender. I went into the 2010 Royal Rumble fully believing in myself, confident that I could defeat him. I knew I had the speed advantage and that if I could maybe take out a leg or catch him with something unexpected, I had a chance. It's not just the size of the dog in the fight, but the size of the fight in the dog, right? Well, this dog had just found himself in the yard of the top dog, the Fina. It would take everything I had to avoid ending the night resting in peace. Unfortunately for me, he was more than ready for that plan. But I'd seen the blood. I'd heard him. He was human. And I knew if I just kept at it, I could win this match and become world heavyweight champion again. I just had to get back to my feet. is always a double exit. Had me struggling to get my breath once again. What could I do to this guy to stop him?
and Undertaker did what he does best. And my name was added to the tombstone of all his victims. Coming so close to defeating him and having him just take it all away in an instant, blink of a eye. After you compete with Undertaker, you gain a full appreciation for why he truly is the Phenom and forever will be. It wouldn't be the last time we compete, but it's one of my favorite matches, even if it didn't go my way that night. With the WWE Championship controversially vacated in the summer of 2011, I fought and clawed to the finals of the WWE title tournament with my opponent, The Miz. Had to face three different opponents to get to the top of the tournament. Dolph Ziggler, R-Truth, and then The Miz. I hate The Miz inside that ring. Because he's very dangerous. He'll do anything to win. Maybe we weren't in the middle of a huge personal rivalry, but there was no chance I was going to let The Miz stand in my way of finally winning the WWE Championship. With an opponent as tricky as he is, I had to be ready for anything. Every time you face him, you just don't know what he's going to come up with to try to steal one from you. Which can make the whole pace of the match feel fast and chaotic. But I thrive in that environment. And that night, I was going to use every bit of my experience to get that victory. Maybe I had come in taking Miz a little lightly. But I can tell you, after I kicked out here, I understood that I was going to be in a dogfight. Despite his team saying otherwise, on this night, he had not come out to play. Miz took advantage when I let frustration take over for a second. 
And that DDT that he hit me with had me seeing stars. Maybe he didn't get the pin there. I don't know. But if I made another mistake like that, I was going to pay. Miz would be leaving the arena with his second WWE Championship. And the 619 landed, and I saw he wasn't really moving at all as I climbed those ropes. The winner of this match, a new WWE Champion. I never thought I'd hold the WWE Championship when I started. Getting that three count on Miz, holding that championship in my hands, it was an incredible moment in my career. even if it didn't last as long as I would have hoped. No one can take that achievement away from me. And without someone like The Miz to push me in that bout, I truly wouldn't know if it would have meant as much as it did. After a short time away, I finally returned home to WWE and was looking to make an impact and found myself in the crosshairs of the Samoan submission machine, Samoa Joe. I believe Samoa Joe is very dangerous in many qualities in this game. He's strong, he's fast, his submissions are incredible. I've felt all of those three and more every time I faced him. Each time we met, it felt like he found a new body part to target. Derail my WWE return so soon. With the chance to battle him again on Raw, I knew that if I could dig deep and avoid his devastating blows, I had a chance, which, against Joe, is all you can really ask for.
thought he could just do whatever he wanted to me. I definitely overestimated the damage I'd done to Joe at this point. He just waited for me to come to him, and I obliged. Huge, painful mistake right there. to get creative if I was going to win over Joe. Never had someone just block the 619 before like that. Joe's lethal, and I had to act fast. Precision beats power, correct? Placed the boot perfectly and got myself a little time just to breathe. But if I didn't do something quick, this was going to be like every other match I'd had with Joe.
Luckily, he went to lift me up and not go for a cover right there. Joe had me right where he wanted me, but he waited just a little too long to act. And that gave me the time to realize what was happening. I counter the Uranagi and finally get the pinfall victory over him. I know the United States Championship wasn't on the line that night, but beating Samoa Joe that night made me feel like a real champion. Joe made me realize immediately in my return that WWE hadn't gone any easier, and I had to be on my A game each and every night. He's an incredible opponent, and not too bad of a guy when he's not jumping you after you beat him for the U.S. Championship, I guess. Throughout my career, I competed against the best luchadors on the planet, and I owned victories over them all. The greatest match superstar in WWE history. The chance to take on another Lucha Libre master in Gran Metallic was something that got me very excited. Competing against another luchador, it motivates me. It inspires me to learn from the new generation, and I have something to teach them as well. This guy right here, Gran Metallic, at one time, was watching me on TV and said, I want to do that. And look at him now, one of the best. He's the king of the ropes. Metalik loves to fly. It's a different style of high flying. It's a different control. This generation has something new under their sleeve. And you have to respect that. The heritage and culture of Lucha Libre in great hands here. When I had the opportunity to face Gran Metalik, I knew these were deep roots. We were going back to where I began. I was so excited to give the WWE Universe a taste of true lucha libre and knew this was a dream match that they couldn't afford to miss. From the second he grabbed me, I knew right away that he was here to make a statement. He pulled out and then just rolled me up. One, two, kick out. I was like, wow, okay. I knew at the beginning of this that he was gonna bring a fight, but he really brought the fight.
this was like peanut butter and jelly. I hit the senton, and right after that, anything. And that rana, man, I don't remember even being knocked out so hard off a rana. Normally, it's me giving them, not taking them. I still had the fight within me. Kicked out at two, but I had to stay sharp if I wanted to leave with my hand raised. Gran Metalik wasn't letting up. This match had been non-stop back and forth action, and I knew we were both getting a little tired in there. Honestly, I was, and I thought he was as well. So when he didn't offer much resistance to the runner, I thought maybe this is the right time. I was on the path of the 619. It connects in a matter of moments, finishing up with a frog splash. Here is your winner. Now this match was back and forth, Mysterio. up and down. Lucha Libre style at its finest. When that frog splash landed, I knew that was it. It was over. Now I gotta say, Gran Metalik put up a hell of a fight. He was everything I expected and much more to be as an opponent. And I told him once it was over, I would love to have this match once again. I love seeing the next wave of luchadores and getting to test myself against one of the best and the upcoming was very special to me. Getting the win, of course, just makes it much sweeter. Rivalries in WWE often go beyond pride or championships and turn personal. With that said, I've never felt a more personal, bitter, and gruesome rivalry than I did with Seth Rollins. The Messiah and his disciple Murphy attacked my livelihood and targeted my eye. That particular attack was unexpected. Once they took that, they targeted my family and brutalized my son down. For months, our intense rivalry continued to escalate, and I knew it was coming to a head. I desperately wanted revenge. At payback, we were going to show Seth and Murphy that they picked on the wrong family to mess with, and we were going to return all the pain they'd put on us. And to my pride, Dominic was going to show me that he was more than capable of standing on his own. I was surprised as much as the WWE Universe with his ability to perform wrestling against Seth Rollins at SummerSlam for the first time. That was his first match ever. And he'd done moves he had never done before. Positioning, timing, that all takes years to learn. And he managed to pick up on it in one night, teaming with my son for the first time. I felt like I was flying higher than any West Coast pop. We were going to overwhelm them from the start. Nothing was going to stop the Mysterio family that night. Nothing.
We want to get our payback here, but I definitely had a moment where it just hit me. I'm teaming up with my son. We're doing a this is what you want, huh? Be careful what you wish for, Ray. to stand on Y de que les digo, I won Royal Rumbles, countless championships, and let me tell you, de que les digo, de verdad, nothing felt as good as this win did. Getting to team with my son was easily the proudest moment of my career. Tengo un gran orgullo, and seeing him get the win was a rush unlike anything else. La venganza es dulce. Revenge was great, but seeing my son succeed is what mattered the most. Estoy tan orgulloso de él. I'm so proud. When I first started in this game, there were a lot of doubts about what I'd be able to accomplish. From day one, I took that doubt and used it to fuel my desire to reach for the sky and achieve everything I could desire in this business. Whether that meant taking to the air against fellow luchadors and high flyers, or trying to outmaneuver the greatest math technicians, or simply trying to avoid the biggest finishers from the biggest monsters. I was always ready to prove that I had the ability to not just be good, to not only become a champion, but to go down in history as one of the greatest superstars of all time. I've traveled the world in search of the highest competition. And while things didn't always go my way, I've made sure to try and turn every negative into a positive. When you have the entire world thinking you're in over your head, sometimes the best feeling in the world is reminding them that you're exactly where you're supposed to be. After spending over 30 years in sports entertainment, I still have the same hunger, the same desire to show people that doubt me that they're making a mistake. I still want to win championships, and I still want to compete at the highest level. I just have the added benefit of getting to watch my son now walk the roads that I traveled years before. He'll face those same doubts, and hopefully I've given him the tools to overcome and prove people wrong. As for me, the greatest mask of all time? Well, let's just say 
that this old filthy animal still has plenty of tricks left up his sleeve. Plenty of 619s left to dial up. And plenty of lessons to teach the WWE superstars. I'm fortunate enough to say that I'm so proud of what I've done in the ring. Proud of who I've competed against. Proud of who I've defeated and proud of the records I've set. The love of the fans, the friendships I've made everywhere I've been, and the security sports entertainment has given my family, I couldn't have asked for anything more. It's no mystery that the love of the fans is what makes me truly feel like a king.